In this short, this short video, we're going to talk about the distributive property, which is really what we might call removing parentheses. So let's start with a very simple example. And we're just going to multiply 2 times the group 3x plus 6y. Now, we could look at this in the simplest way of thinking about multiplication. This would mean I would have two groups, 3x plus 6y, and I would add them together. And when I add them together, I can just collect like terms, and I'll get 6x plus 12y. Now, that's kind of a long way to do this, because a simpler way would be to say, I know I'm going to have two of the 3x's, and I'll have two of the 6y's. So why don't I just take 2 times 3x, add that to 2 times 6y. And that's a shortcut. And that's what we call the distributive property, because we are distributing the multiplication of the 2 across both the 3x and the 6y. Now, we want to be careful about the signs, and it's really not that difficult if we think of everything as terms and the sign as part of the term. So I think of what's on the outside as a negative 5, and on the inside, I think I have a positive 3x and a negative 6. So I don't think of this as a minus sign or subtraction. I think that this is a negative sign in front of the 6. And now when I distribute the multiplication, I'm going to explicitly write out whatever sign comes from that multiplication. So when I have a negative 5 times a 3x, I'll get a negative 15x. So I'll write that out. A negative 5 times a negative 6 will be a plus or positive 30. Now, I put a little white plus sign here, but in the end, we'll be doing a lot of this multiplication mentally, and so we'll be able to go straight to writing negative 15x, positive 30. And then if we needed to, we could look at this as negative 15x plus 30. But now the sign is taking care of itself. So again, we've distributed this negative 5 as a term to the multiplication of positive 3x and negative 6. All right, let's look at another example. Here I have uh, two sets of parentheses. So I'm going to use the distributive property twice, and I've got to be careful with the signs. So in the first set of parentheses, my, I have a positive 4, which will be multiplied by a positive 5y, and then by a negative 8. In the second set of parentheses, I have a negative 3. So again, I'm not looking at this as a minus sign or a subtraction. I'm looking this at this as a negative 3 times a positive 4 and times a negative 8y. And again, I have uh, put these little plus signs in there to be formally correct, but when we're doing this in practice, we won't actually be writing out these products usually. And we'll just go to, oh, I have a positive 4 times a positive 5y, that's a positive 20y. I have a positive 4 times a negative 8, that gives me a negative 32. And if I have a negative 3 times a positive 4, That'll give me a negative 12. And a negative 3 times a negative 8y gives me a positive 24y. Now, once I've got all these products, I still have to look for like terms. Remember, like terms have the same variable raised to the same exponent, or they're just constants. So I would collect the two constants. They combine to make negative 44. And the two y terms combine to make positive 44y. 
All right, what is different about this example? We still have two sets of parentheses. The difference, though, is that now I just have a minus sign or a negative sign in front of the second set of parentheses. And the way we're going to deal with that is we're going to treat that as multiplication by negative 1. So everything else is going to be the same. I still think of this as negative 3 times 2u, then negative 3 times negative 5. And then in the second set of parentheses, I have negative 1 times positive 5u, negative 1 times negative 3. And so when I multiply all those out, I still see I have some like terms. So I have a negative 6u and a negative 5u. Those should make negative 11u. And 15 plus 3 make 18. Now the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So we could put the group on the left, so the parentheses on the left, and the multiplier on the right. And I still have a distributive. I still think of this as a positive 3. It'll get multiplied by a positive 2m and a positive 5, which will give me 6m plus 15. And we'll see why I did that in a minute. So you know, suppose that instead of having some known term on the outside, I just have some blank or a box. Well, how would we do this? Well, we still distribute the multiplication by the box, right? The, a box is a symbol, just like an X or a Y. And so I would have an, the box times 2X, and then the box times negative 3. So for example, I could fill in the box with a single term. That's what we've been doing. And so that would give me 4X times 2X and 4X times negative 3 which when I multiply that out, I get 8x squared minus 12x. But I could also put a group inside the box. I could have x minus 2 inside the box, which means when I distribute, I would have x minus 2 times 2x and x minus 2 times negative 3. So again, I can just perform the multiplication as I normally would. I would have 2x times x, 2x times negative 2, negative 3 times x, negative 3 times negative 2. So we get those four products. Then we can look for some like terms. We have two like terms here. The x squared is not a like term with the negative 4x because the x squared has an exponent of 2. But both the terms that only have x can be combined together to make negative 7x. Now, this is kind of a long way to go about this multiplication. Uh, so let's try to remember this, is that we're going to distribute every term in the first group across every term in the second group. So for example, if I'm multiplying 3p minus 2, times the quantity 2p squared minus p plus 5. Well, I'm going to take the 3p and I'm going to multiply it times each term in the second group, or the group on the right. And uh, so that'll give me three products. First one is 3p times 2p squared. The next one will be 3p times negative p. And then the third one will be 3p times positive 5. Then I move to the second term on the left. And again, I'm going to multiply it times each term in the group on the right. So I have negative 2 times 2p squared, followed by negative 2 times negative p, and then negative 2 times positive 5. Again, most of the time, I'm not going to write out these products. I'll be doing them mentally. But since we've got them, now I would have a positive 6p cubed, a minus 3p squared, plus 15p, minus 4p squared, plus 2p, and minus 10. So my like terms here are my terms that have a p squared. So they'll combine to make a negative 7p squared. 
And the terms that just have p, that'll make a 17p. Now, when I have a binomial times a binomial, so that's a word that we'll be using a lot. Remember, a monomial means one term. Binomial means you have two terms. So I have two groups. Each group has two terms. Then we have a nice memory aid to remind us that we're going to get four multiplications out of this and uh, four terms after we perform the multiplication. So it's the same ideas that we just did. I will take first the 2n and multiply it times every term on the right. Then I'll take the negative 9, multiply it times every term on the right. That will give me a total of 4. So first I'll have 2n times 6n, then 2n times negative 1, negative 9 times 6n, and negative 9 times negative 1. And if I look at these two binomials written next to each other, I could see that I have in each pair a first term and a last term. Or if I just look at it kind of geometrically, there are outside terms, the 2n and the negative 1, and there are inside terms, the negative 9 and the 6n. And so our four products that we have here can be labeled as the product of the first terms, then the product of the outside terms, followed by the product of the inside terms, and last, the product of the last terms. And so we have this memory aid, F-O-I-L, or the word FOIL, to help us remember that we're going to have four terms when we do this type of multiplication. Of course, after we multiply, we'll look for some like terms, and then we will collect the like terms. So in summary, we have the basic distributive property where we can multiply a group on the left or on the right and distribute the multiplication across each term inside the group. For the extended distributive property, we're going to have the product of two groups and we'll take each term in the left group and multiply it times each term in the right. And for the special case where I have groups which are binomials, so a binomial times a binomial, we have this FOIL foil to help us remember that we're going to have four products.